Guys, do you remember when I made a video on the log4j vulnerability and what was called the log4 shell, which allows an attacker to submit some sort of a malicious uh, log entry that gets logged by log4j and that retrieves some sort of code from a remote server that gets downloaded onto the log4j, whatever the log4j was running at that time, and then actually executes on your back end infrastructure you know people have uh, demonstrated uh, running bitcoin miners and all sorts of stuff right and i mentioned in the video that hey like one of the common sense is your back and have no business to be connected to the internet to begin with right That's, these are part of the security defense mechanisms that you need to take uh, into considerations while you know securing your back and it's like there's no need to for for a full rain internet access on your back and it has to be you know in a in a private network and only the reverse proxy should have access to a kind of a public internet or the api gateway which then have the access to the public internet you know but we talked also about situations where this is not always possible but right because you need uh, access to ocsp uh, stapling service on the back end you know as an internet service but again we all said hey, hey just al allow your firewalls only access to these kind of servers right if you want internet access so we talked about that and i said yeah once we do that the vulnerabilities kind of settles down well security researchers found another way in look 4j this is recent this was literally two days ago you know and the good thing is that it was already being patched right you can effectively do a denial of service on your look 4j and <sighs> Whether you have internet or not, this is actually really catastrophic. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Back Engineering Show with your host, Hossein Nasser. And this vulnerability, which I just happened to name myself, I'm going to call it Log4DOS, allows an attacker to send a specific malicious entry in your login ID that get logged. And when it gets logged, Log4j will take a look at it and will do a recursive lookup up an, an infinite recursive lookup that will keep, keeps looking up, looking up until the server runs out of memory and you get a, a stack overflow error and the process will shuts down and the process shuts down. You might, you might, say, you might say, Jose, who cares if the process shut down is going to start back up? Well, that is where a denial of service attack can actually take maximum effect. If I am a single attacker, single user, I send a one request and your backend shuts down, one process of your backend shuts down, if I send 10, 30, 100,000, then your backend will be out of service and I can deny service to others with a single user. That's really bad. If you think about it because when we hear denial of service most of the time we think of like distributed denial of service where like a group of people kind of coordinate to attack one server from different ip addresses and do some sort of these uh, tcp half open and all these kind of fancy attacks but denial of service can happen if you if you find a way to crash a backend as a client as a normal user whether you are authenticated or not, if you find a way to crash a backend, then you find a way to DOS that backend, right? And when you do a denial of service, then you just denied service for you just you just basically shut down the server. Then right? it's the it's is the equivalent of an attack to a remote code execution, right? Granted that remote code execution gives you more lenient, you know open control where you can run your own code on the back end and do even more evil stuff but this is this is really bad so let's go to the uh, log4j vulnerability uh, i guess page and then read through this history and uh, talk about this a little bit all right guys so this page i'm going to reference this page in the uh, comment section below and the podcast show notes 
but effectively this this gives you the whole history of uh, basically everything that happened in log4j security vulnerability wise that's that's pretty much it so i'm gonna scroll down to the first time we heard about this which is around this time like log4j 13 was basically that that's when we first patched the first version of log4j when we discovered this this whole thing right so maybe maybe it's a little bit later than that Right, so improper validation of certificate with with host mess match in Apache log four. No, this is different. This is way before, right? This is this is a, an improper validation of certificate host mess match. So this is, this is this is related to the TLS aspect of things. But look at this. Log four J version fifteen. What's the? What does it say? This is the. This is the CVE. Apache Log4j JNDI features do not pro protect against attacker controlled LDAP and other JNDI related endpoint. This is where this is says actually critical. What was that? The, what was the TLS one before? Was it also critical? No, it was it was actually low. Forget about it. So this is the critical one, right? It says remote code execution. We talked about it in the previous video. I'm going to reference in the show notes. You can watch the previous coverage that I did on log4j right so how can you do actual remote execution in details because i need to i like to talk in details about things how actually it works right and then obviously when it when things when things are like this right when you find something so critical there is a lot of pressure on the team to fix it quickly and when you fix something quickly there you are bound to make mistakes right so i don't blame the log4j team this amount of pressure on the engineers is just tremendous you know so i totally understand that uh they are they are running into this uh, patch and after a patch after a patch kind of situation and i totally don't blame them right because this is a very stressful situation and we have to be a little bit of empathetic when it comes to these things you know and then uh, so a follow-up 216 patch was released because some of the stuff in log4j was missed what what was missed it was found that the fix to address cve 2021 blah 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 in apache log4j 215 was incomplete in certain non-default configuration when the login configuration uses a non-default pattern page layout with a context lookup so there is a context lookup this is completely different than the jndi thing right it's a different context lockup, right? And when you use that, attackers with control over the thread context map, right? I don't know what's that, to be honest. MDC, the thread context map input, right? Data can craft malicious input using a JNDI lockup pattern. So if you have control over login ID, which you do as a user, right? You can craft a GNDI, which is the path that we talked about previously, and stick it here, right? And it's basically a different code path. It's very hard when you write big software to find all the endpoint, all the, you know, the entry point that triggers that behavior, you know? And this is just another code path that they missed, right? And uh, you might say, it's just look, let's look through all the paths. It's it's very very hard to to find to find all the possible path where something can get executed, right? Basically, you have to look up every single string that you used in your code in, in your backend. Maybe this is even harder than that, obviously, right? So yeah, so someone found a way to inject a JNDI string, which obviously we talked about how how that can retrieve a code from an LDAP server, which has code, and then that code can get executed, right? So remote code execution. So if someone found another, and I, here I believe it was probably a security researcher, if I'm not mistaken. Did they give a, did they give credit to someone here? Let's read. Credit, yeah. This issue was discovered by Kai Minderman of IC Consult and separate, separated by 4RA1N right additional vulnerability detected discovered independently by ash and uh, uh, ash fox of google alvaro manoz and tony T 
Toraleba from GitHub. I'm butchering these names. I'm sorry. Anthony Weems of Paratorian and uh, Riotech. So all these guys, you know, there are just a bunch of security researchers on top of Log4j, you know? It's, it's just like when Windows, when, when Mac first appear to be like became started to become mainstream you know versus windows everyone was saying oh mac was virus free there's no viruses there are no vulnerabilities on mac and there it's 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 safer than windows the reason is that windows was so popular that everybody was trying to kind of strip it and find bugs and find vulnerabilities mac was still new nobody uh, gave attention to mac right so of course it won't be it, it will it will it will show itself as it's it's bug free or it's vulnerability free but that's not the case look for jay these bugs were there for ages but it's not it wasn't eyes were not on that software like now like all the security research from big companies now just hammering on this software which is a good thing which is a good thing right they finding these bugs so they found this right and they patched to a new and another patch 216 so 2.16 was patched to find this another code path which led to another remote code execution which can lead to another code, code execution so that's another one and just two days ago another patch was released to protect against a denial of service you know, this has nothing to do with remote code execution. So people were focusing, okay, how can I do a remote code execution? So these security researchers were just doing, uh, you know, RCE, like all trying just to do, okay, how can I, how can I break the software? So I do an RCE, but now credit to who, who discovered this? Hideaki, my God, I'm sorry. Hideaki. Okomato of Akamai, Akamai Technologies. We, we made a video on Akamai when they had all this, you know, the CDN outage, right? Guy Lederfin of Trend Micro Research working with Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and another anonymous vulnerability researcher. Okay. So some people now discovered, okay, it's not really, wait, in 2.16, even with the latest patch, we found... A, ma a critical uh, uh, it's high it's not which is which is higher critical or high i'm gonna guess critical is higher right so it's a high <laughs> still still bad right i can shut down your back end which is really bad right with just a string so what is what does it do what does this dos attack do apache look for j versions 20 alpha 1 through 216 did not protect against an uncontrolled recursion from self-referential lookup so this has nothing to do with any remote servers whatsoever this is just a reverse lookup right it will just uh, uh, it's a recursion function that finds something that then looks up itself and then when it finds itself it just keeps looking up itself until you know there is no base condition in this recursion function which crashes the process and then as a result you're dead your backend is dead when the login configuration uses a non-default pattern page layout so you, you have to be in this configuration right a non-default pattern uh, pay a pattern layout with a context lookup for example uh, ct uh, context login id attackers with control over the thread context map input data can craft malicious input data that contains a recursive lockup resulting in a stack overflow error that will terminate the process this is also known as a dos or denial of service attack that's pretty bad if you think about it you know so we don't have details of how the string looks like you know but you can imagine right when you, whenever you have an idea of a lookup right imagine having that string and that lookup results in a string that also needs a lookup and if your code was configured so that it just keeps recursive it does a recursive until it tries to look up that lookup you will basically it will be a never-ending situation and it will 
terminate the process when the ter when the process is terminated that basically results in a, a, a pretty a pretty bad situation where your your back end can basically goes down right so it's not as bad right because you have to be in this configuration the non-default pattern layout but if you are in this configuration you might need to patch this if you want so move to 217 so all right guys uh yeah so i was wrong you know i told you that hey just cutting off the internet and setting up uh, proper firewalls uh, rules can protect you against this remote code execution but yeah it can protect you against remote code execution so your backend won't have access to the backend to 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 the internet which have all these nasty attackers websites ldap servers you know but still doesn't protect you against dos attacks so if you if you thought just disabling the lockups altogether and disabling internet on the backend is enough I'm not sure about that anymore, to be honest, right? So certain kind of lookups can still trigger that behavior, right? You know? yeah, so this, this, the latest one, the DOS one, has nothing to do with JNDI at all, right? This is a context login lockup. So it's a completely different thing as far as I know, right? I might be wrong. But yeah, uh, if, you, if you're using Look4j, make sure to patch it to the uh, latest version. I'm pretty sure people are uh, you know uh, admins are already busy just finished patching uh, 216 now they have to do patch 217 obviously but yeah guys this is uh, i guess i guess uh, this is going to be a continuing situation with look for j but it uh, makes you just appreciate the, the work that the open source community is doing you know we've we've uh, everybody uses these open source but they they rarely get any accolades or any you know any attaboy you know hey good job guys thank you for uh, building curl thank you for building look for jail thank you for building all this open source software you know nobody nobody says that on a daily basis but when things go wrong everybody just harasses those open source maintainers which is kind of sad and if you think about it, this is just yeah it just makes me sad that you know, when we need something, we say, hey, how dare you? You built bad software. Come on, really? Like, everybody writes bad software. This software, you know, nobody writes perfect software at the end of the day. You know, you have to be, at least we have to be a little bit of empathetic when it comes to these kind of things, right? And then, and then appreciate your open source maintainers. Kudos for everybody working on open source. I know a lot of, of this community or open source maintainers so thank you thank you so much for your great efforts and uh, yeah things happen bugs happen vulnerabilities happen so yeah as long as we find it before they become a zero day and then patch it as as quickly as possible we're good right all right guys talk to you later thank you so much